Hello, this is Stephanie again, just coming back with my top five perennials for 2022. So it's a little hard to say because some of my perennials, as you can see, um, these Montauk daisies have not pushed out any blooms yet. So this is based on right now. They have been a great filler perennial. So I'll have them as an honorable mention right here. Again, this is in no particular order. Um, and some of this is kind of hard to say because some of the stuff's out of bloom that I would definitely choose as a top five. So an honorable mention will be these Montauk Daisies. They just filled it in. They're a great little, I mean, I bought these on clearance for next to nothing. Um, and I just popped them in, just some empty spaces and it just does fill in and give a, a beautiful leaf structure. I do like it, the leaf structure. Um, and I do love the blooms when they're in bloom, but they're not in bloom yet. So probably in a week or so, I will be able to see them. Um, but let's get on with this top five. So, um, one, as we're here, those should be two back here. One is, this is the Stormy Night Hibiscus. This, I don't have, it doesn't have blooms on it. It has, um, a pink swirly bloom with a dark, hot pink throat. Beautiful. But I really bought this for the foliage. Um, it is clearly surrounded by a ton of green foliage. Uh, so I wanted to have this dark pop and it just, it just screams diva. I, I love it. It just gives itself attention just by its leaves alone. Then when it has blooms on it, it's just like all bow down to Queen Bee. So I do love this one. I bought this at full price um, because it was a birthday gift to myself. Actually a birthday gift from my friend. She gave me some money. So I did use that to get this and 100% um, worth it. It's its first year in the ground, so we'll see how big it gets next year. Um, might have to take out more of the iris to make some space, which I'm totally fine doing. Um, so the next one is going to be the Powwow White Echinacea. Um, I do love these coneflowers. I love coneflowers in general. However, these are the only ones that have survived in my garden. I think it just gets too much moisture. So anytime I try to plant them, they just rot out. Um, the Powwow White, for whatever reason, they just tolerate it a lot better. Then I try to do Cheyenne Spirit, I try to do uh, Pow Wow Wildberry, all just rot out and um, they just didn't even leaf out, it was just bad. So these um, are going to be uh, in my top five for sure. Again, they, I mean, maybe I'll dead, I did have them sometimes, but not really. They just kind of are there and they're just beautiful white flower. I love the green um, and the cone and the yellow, so just, just stunning. So those are two. I'm gonna bring you over to the side garden for another two. Another one in my top five will have to be 100% so, um, sedum. This is Autumn Joy. This is everywhere in my garden. I didn't buy any of it. Came with the house, and I am so thankful because it is 100% a performer, zero maintenance. I cut it to put in arrangements. Um, I've given it away. It's easy to divide. It's easy to propagate. It's just an absolute workhorse from when it comes out in April with the beautiful florets to now in fall and then winter when it's dried up, it's so beautiful. Um, I would put this everywhere if I could, um, but just for, but it literally is in almost every single flower bed I have here because it's a great filler. It has just great presence and it requires no maintenance, no fertilizing. It doesn't need the extra water. It is just gorgeous and low maintenance. So 100% probably my my favorite perennial period um, is going to be uh, sedum for sure another one is definitely salvia so this one is a white salvia i don't know the name of it um i bought them at lowe's for about five bucks and they have been in bloom the entire summer i got them maybe in like june i want to say may june and it has not stopped blooming. I cut it back maybe once, and there's just always, it's just always in color. It is about, I wanna say 18 inches wide and about 12 inches tall right now. Um, again, I would have it in more areas, 
So in a few years, I will divide it and probably put it in more spots to fill in. Um, it is 100% worth the space and it requires, again, no time for me. So right here is the Octoy Sedum and the Salvia together and I just love it. My last one. It's gonna be a hard, it's gonna be hard to choose the last one. But I'm gonna, again, as you can, if <laughs> for the post, this is just, again, I'm just a super low maintenance type of person, you know, somewhat lazy. But this will be in the top five for sure. So this is the Helen von Stein Lamb's Ear. I bought this plant, this plant as a one gallon last year in probably the end of September, early October on Clarence. Um, you know, so it was maybe a quarter of this size. And this is one year of growth and it has to be, I wanna say two and a half feet wide. I actually took a chunk out of this and it doesn't get very tall. It's probably about as tall as it's gonna get. And this is one year's growth. I would love to divide it and just kind of do a whole border of it, but um, <clears throat> I don't know, but I probably will divide it and give it to my mom. Um, she does need something to fill in her front. She has a full sun bed in her front and it is just a zero, literally zero maintenance plant. Doesn't need to be fertilized. It doesn't need to be over watered. It doesn't want to be over watered. Doesn't really want to be fertilized. It is just, it requires nothing and it gives so much the texture, the color, the leaf structure it is just 100 percent um probably number one or number two on my list would have to be the helen von stein so this one gets full sun um and then there's this one that gets partial sun i mean maybe gets about four hours of sun and it's just huge it is definitely in the three foot range it's just huge. Um, like, and look, my, my, the dusting board is just fantastic. I just love it. So it is definitely, if you're looking for something to fill in space that requires no maintenance, definitely Helen von Stein is your, is your go-to. It, it should be a go-to. It just is beautiful, stunning, and doesn't really ask for much back as far as love. So those are my top five perennials for 2022. Hope you stay tuned for um, our shrubs. See you soon. Bye-bye.